Welcome to the Outlaw Mud Show Drive-In. My name is Joe Connor. With me is Mohammed Fathy. Hello, everyone. What a great couple of days. Yeah, we stood and we delivered, or rather we, or rather we received the delivery. I guess that's that's what we're like. Whichever, whichever way. Yeah. Um, it's gonna be a short look at takeover, stand and deliver, real quick. Um, I'm actually recording this on the clock today, so there we go. Um, starting off on the pre-show, Zoe Stark defeated Tony Storm. Um, it was good, short, you know, ten-minute match, but it definitely showed that to- uh, Zoe Stark is a player to watch. Um, she's been giving a, a, getting a good push, and honestly, the way she's been pushed the past two months is exactly the way EW needs to take note of how to establish if, a female if, personality. If they want to put uh, like if they want to get someone ready for the final picture. That's how they should do it. Problem is, AEW. Zoe Stark's a perfect look. Yeah, yeah. Zoe. Uh, yeah, Zoe Stark is like. And granted, she already had a match. Uh, she already had a confrontation with Raquel, uh, but she had her match with Dakota. Dakota, right? Not her. Kurt, yeah. Yeah. So she might be a little bit, you know, back of the club, but at least you're establishing her as a presence that is, you know, that can that can work. Like she beat the the, the last number one contender, so now she's exactly yeah so now she, her name is elevated so that's uh, that's a good spot for her and uh it's a great match but uh, with tony storm and everything but once again like tony storm just feels un- you know out of place as a as a heel it's, he does. I, I, w- I was thinking post-match she was going to shake hands. Um, I, I do feel she's going to be going back to face here pretty soon. Yeah. I, I think, think it's, it's the best uh, It's the teaser. It's, it's nothing wrong with that. that. Like, a lot of people just say, you know, or maybe faces where they're in the character. Yeah. Yeah. It's just the Tony Storm doesn't have the nuances of the heel that, you know, make you believe mm. this is actually a bitch or, like, you know, a bad guy. As, as I said, her shift to heal to me was just because D. Hartwell wasn't ready for war games. They needed to have somebody who they could trust in there in that environment. Yeah. Um, now, Indy, as we'll talk about later, has definitely upped her game. Um, so I think it's you know perfect time for Tony to be transitioning back to a face, especially if EO winds up getting the call up, which. It seems like she might be getting with uh, the way she had the it post like show had, celebration yeah, at the end. Because they had the whole goodbye thing. I think maybe she doesn't go right away. Maybe she has like, you know, a, a, like, you know, a couple of weeks uh, or three or four weeks, you know, a mid card robbery. That yeah. <laughs> but we'll get to that. But uh, the pre show was actually, I think this is like, you know, I think they finally found, found the format of the pre show that works for their. Mm. Live audience, like uh, the Samoa Joe interviews. interviews, perfect. Uh, it it felt more like a like a sport thing than uh, main roster shows. Yeah, like if that. you watch like PLC Fast Lane or whatever, it just feels all long and worn out. Like mm. you're bored almost watching it, and except for the, like the, whatever the pre-show matches on, this here actually engaged you. Like you had different personalities talking about it, and it helped that it was like MMA personalities. Yeah. Then you had Samoa Joe, um, like Samoa Joe with Finn Balor, Samoa Joe. Um, with carrying cross, you know, yeah. a lot of good. Um, yeah, they had the dynamics the, between those guys. With Raquel, he even like, you, you know, know, they brought in the interviews themselves. Felt real. They didn't feel, you know, overproduced <laughs> or like, you know, these people were trying to stay in character. There was, you could tell that there's a rawness there to what they're saying. It's like it's coming from their heart. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was it's great. Uh, it's a great format, I think. Like and having people break down each match, that's a good. That's a good. That's a good thing. Not sure. Like I like that they labeled intangibles as intangibles. They could have just tried, you know, fighting styles or like you know biggest advantages. But when they said, that, like, because when they say an intangible, it's something that that guy has that intangible. I never saw it like categorized before. Like his intangible is ring IQ. <laughs> 
Right. I I I, I, uh, I kind of enjoyed the whole um, tell the tape that they were doing yeah. with them. Yeah. No, this is just uh, you know a small nuance thing, but it's it felt like mm-hmm. especially for Walter versus uh, Champe, it, it did wonders. It felt like made it feel like a big big fight. It's... Did. Yeah. Um. Still kicked off with uh, um, Nita Strauss doing the national anthem, and I think she did great job with that. Um, WWE, you know, does fantastic with making things feel like major events, and it was an awesome way to, you know, the people who were in attendance hype before the main or the the main show actually started. Yeah, it was. Um, it was great. It's like and uh, that platform lowering and doing it like it's even like it's the best thing about NXT is NXT is stripped down, but they still find a way to make things look epic. Mm-hmm. They look smaller, but they look uh, they still Definitely. look epic in their own way. It's yes. Um, first match we had Pete Dunne defeating Kushida. Um, short but sweet match um i think these two could possibly have you know a, yeah they could have a have kushida get another victory in a couple weeks and lead to like a best out three two three falls match in like a month month and a half um because they mesh really well together these two yeah i'd be da- i'd be down for that yeah that's it's kind of weird because you know on paper kushida and pete dunn do, do not match up like they're different worlds, yeah. they're different styles, they're ever different everything. But once again, like Kushida, Kushida uh, in NXT now is different, completely different from Kushida in New Japan Pro Wrestling. It's like he's totally yeah, he's level, but his demeanor is different. His his attacks are more vicious. He used to do some of that stuff in New Japan, but he only did it like in big fights, like that one, yes. uh, like that one time when he beat Hiro- Hiromo mercilessly, like and that that was the but. Uh, yeah, they, they he matched up very well with Pete, and having a sudden finish makes you feel like this is like it's not like it was a dominant victory. So Pete did not, you know, establish himself as the better technical wrestler. Right. He actually knocked him out. <laughs> so it's like the debate between the two is still going on. So it it can carry a couple yes. more matches. Matt. Um, I'm an eliminator, which blew me away. I was thinking. It was going to be a cluster. It wound up being great. Um, everyone involved brought their A game. Um, I mean, Dexter Loomis was Dexter Loomis, but at least he was still wrestling for once. Yeah. Um, Leon Ruff and Swerve. Oh, like yeah. Yeah. that was great. Um, Leon Ruff is no longer just the jobber um, who was, you know, hanging around with um, Damian Priest. Swerve is basically coming what he was going to be at the end of his MLW run, and he's using physicality, which is great. Cameron Grimes, you know, he's Cameron Grimes, Cameron but Grimes, yeah. he's shown people that he's more than just comedy act. Play night, hanging out and just demanding the attention of everybody, cutting like you know a CM Punk esque like you know promo on the way to the not CM Punk esque, but like what CM Punk would do at like the Royal Rumble, where he's yeah. talking trash to it's kind of, it's kind of all like of his a, opponents. Yeah, it's kind of a mix between CM Punk and John Cena in two thousand three. It's yes, yes, and then of course Bronson Reed who just completely showed everybody that he is above yeah. the jobber that people were saying he was when people were saying that you know he didn't deserve to beat you know LA Knight he didn't deserve to be in a spot he's in he definitely deserves to be in the spot he's in it was great yeah well, honestly anyone who said back then that yeah, he didn't deserve to be LA Knight was not paying attention because the guy has been putting in the work. The guy has been being and being pushed, and rightfully so. Like he has, he's not. He, they were kind of like he was on pose for a while, but once they pushed him into the into the spotlight, he grabbed it, didn't let it go. He was like, "This is mine. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it." And yeah, he first got eyes on him back at a. a um uh, or the takeover in August was before, take, before yes. takeover thirty, before that ladder match when he beat Priest in the one on one match. That, yes, like 
yeah and the, the guy is the guy is just awesome like his technique like honestly nxt has a lot like every big man that has wrestled for nxt has is awesome in their own right but bronson reed has a different energy than keith lee or samoa joe or or bull dempsey or any of he does guys. yeah he's like uh like he's his the high impact and speed like he even like you could say Keith Lee has a high impact and speed, but like Bronson Reed, more than anyone else, does not look like he should be able to do that. It's 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 very uh, Bam Bam Bigelow. Yes. Yes, and he has an intensity, and he is he just you know he exudes that. Uh, uh, that's gonna this is gonna make me sound like an old uh, old man, but he just exudes that confidence or the hunger of a youth. <laughs> He just, you know, he has the, you know, like, this guy comes out and he says he wants this, I believe him. <laughs> yes. That is a guy who truly, who truly wants it. And, and honestly, it's a great, like, it's a great show for him. First of all, this match, I thought that, you know, it was like a gauntlet eliminator, like the old classic where, you know, one guy eliminates, uh, like, two guys start, and the next guy does not come out until one of, one of them is eliminated. And then Same. That's what I was thinking. So when I, like, you know, like, when there was a countdown and Bronson come out, and I was like, oh, God, this is gonna, this is... Yeah, I don't know how this is, how this is going to go. It's it might it might just blow up in everyone's face, but no, they even it, yeah. yeah. I and, thought it was. Yeah. And Lee, Lee is like Lee doesn't even like, you know, need to wrestle to get a reaction like uh, Trevor Lee, uh, oh my, why am I saying Trevor Lee? Cameron Grimes. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, such an indie mark. Anyway, Cameron Grimes. Cameron Grimes, uh, like, Cameron Grimes can, it's just his character work along can, it gives him an entitlement that is very rare that where he can actually get by on the bare minimum of what he can, of what he can do in the ring. Yeah. It's, it's a good spot to be in. And it is. Yeah. yeah. He's he, he he could have like the um the Sammy type push of um loudmouth getting like a secondary belt and just running with it for like a month or two. Yeah, exactly. And any loss will not hurt that guy. That guy is just you know, he's he well, it's kinda weird like because it's a weird balance in wrestling. There are some guys where you have more technical more technical ability than entertainment value and you love those guys but there are other guys who have more entertainment that, that's not saying that he doesn't have technical ability he has a lot of technical ability he's great but he has but right now his levels of entertainment uh, value are higher so it's it's great this is like this is you know characters are like this that these are what makes you fall in love with wrestling it's like the outlandish the weird stuff. yeah yeah that's that's what they like, and uh, LA Knight, I thought he was going to win it, honestly, for some reason, like, I thought, well, this might be his coming out party, because, but, again, LA Knight is one of those other guys who are Teflon, a loss would not hurt him, he's, mm -hmm. he's just, he's being groomed right now, yeah, he's being groomed, all, the, all, all they need, all he needs is just that microphone, he doesn't, he, and he delivers on uh, everything else, but he just, you know, right now, for him to just, you know, make it over, they just need to keep sticking a microphone in his face and telling him to, you know, do your thing. Exactly. Uh, Swerve. Swerve was a great, uh, Swerve had a great showing out. Leon Roth showing some ferociousness and I think him and Swerve, like, match out well. I think probably in a couple of weeks they're going to have to blow off to their feed. Same. Uh, and... But it's been it's been good, and that start of thing where Leon Roth was crawling out. Like I told you before, while we were chatting, seeing that I thought Leon was doing some sort of like you know special entrance where he's crawling out to the ring. Turns out he was getting beat it up. <laughs> Swerve was coming out behind him. That's it's they actually they flew below the radar, but on takeover it actually made you see that whoa these guys are actually having a feud right now. This is a robbery. Yeah. It's not like a skirmish or anything. This is a war. And Loomis was Loomis. Loomis, again, he's very characteristic. I don't know, like, 
it's the problem is his character this is why i didn't want him to win this country because his character does not lend itself to great technical showcases yeah it's he needs to go by by the bare minimum it's sort mm. of like when the undertaker first started now not compared yeah. to the undertaker but it's still like it's the same vibe where less is more with this guy that's why it's tricky you know putting him in matches having finding fees for him and i don't think i've seen him actually be in any danger like you know get the sympathetic you know for same like he even if he loses he loses by a fluke it's like you know bam one two three or so it's gonna be interesting i think it well you and i like we uh, we thought like they're gonna match him up with la knight next it's gonna it's gotta be interesting la knight you know shooting off on the guy and the guy's just you know no selling and just coming forward at him it's it but and especially for a uh, night it'll be you know a good first pro or i guess certainly a second program but his first victory because i'm pretty sure night will be going over yeah he needs to in that feud i mean like we said he doesn't need anything but now he's lost the browns so he needs to win you know a big match now yeah if, you know solidify where he's at and then and then he can go business as you but this match also had like another goal it's like if anyone is watching nxt for the first time ever on peacock Introduction. Or, they just, or they, just, they just turn to USA because you know takeover. Oh, that's a big thing, and I don't have the network, so I'm gonna check it out. It it was a great showcase of the NXT's mid card. It's it really was. Yeah. It's awesome. Man. What all of that? And next up, we had the United Kingdom Championship. Walter retained over Tommaso Ciampa. Um, for people that don't watch NXT UK, they definitely need to. It's the best show of the week. Um, Walter and Ciampa matched up perfectly. I love Ciampa's takeover attire and his jacket coming onto the ring. Yeah, um, it's a good thing he shaved you. That neck twist is terrifying. Oh, um, Walter did rip with the feet on both sides yeah, of yeah. Champa's head and just twisted. Oof. Um, God, I, I remember like we were chatting during this. Uh, we all cringed, you and me and Pete, and we were like, Yeesh. yeah. <laughs> Great match, though. Um, honestly, it was the big. It was the biggest feeling Champa match since the uh, four way. Um, um, Iron Man changed. match, in my opinion, yeah, for him. Even the Iron Man match yeah. was not entirely about him, so it's like it's the biggest feud since uh, since Gargano for him, probably. It's. I'd say maybe, maybe the uh, the match of Cole that. Um, well, no, yeah, I guess yeah, I guess the, the Gargano. Yeah, I forgot the, the secondary yeah. Gargano yeah, yeah, feud. Yeah, I was talking about that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah. since uh, so it's, about a year ago then. Yeah, or maybe since Cross. No, but Cross was still an upper cover. But this was like you know it had more the more. Mm more uh more on the line than that so god uh, like uh, people were kind of like apparently some people were complaining on twitter about the finish like uh, why would uh, you know champ just be done with a chop like have you seen this man chop people like he broke the freaking announce <laughs> uh-huh. i don't know if that was planned or what but it's it's, it's hell impressive it's just people just need to look up like pictures of people who have been chopped by him and they see the red on people's chests like this guy's known for his chops yeah and yeah i mean like it's the idea about walter is like there there's nothing fancy about him like he uh, that, i'm not saying that as a bad guy but he's like he's stick to the basics type of guy he's like remember like when his motto on the indies was Oh, the, uh, some people perform Walter kills so he's like his whole thing is like he's coming after you just to destroy you he's not gonna you know do a top rope moonsault or or even like a standing moonsault <laughs> right he's not gonna he, he's gonna out wrestle you like uh, that could uh, that could be an option but he's just gonna you know punish you into oblivion that's his that's his style that's his look and that's why people love him it's Matt truly is sacred for him. Yes, exactly, and it's a great match for Champa. It reminded me of Champa of the old. Like it's like, uh, mm. 
I'm, I'm happy Champa shaved his head because, you know, the old man Champa look was not... <laughs> yeah. But it did not sell the underdog look for him. It's like... Mm. It's... I mean, I get it storyline-wise, you want to say that this guy's over, but he's not really over the hell that much. It's just his hair is great. No, he, he's, he, he's, he's roughly our age. He's 35. Yeah. So, like, you don't want to project that you're older than you are right now. It's, it can work in the future, but... Uh, it's a great, like, this is, like, one of the few times where he's actually fighting from underneath. He's not, he's not the dominant guy. Yeah. And... Just, you know, Walter pounding him into it. It's like, I, I'm gonna make a small comparison. It's like Rock and Austin in WrestleMania 19, where, like, after that, uh, Rock hit him with the third rock bottom, but after the second rock bottom, Austin was done. He was just. Yes. Yeah. He was just, you know, getting up just for the sake of getting up. And that's what happened to Champa. So he just laid him out with a chop to the chest, which, if you look at it scientifically, it takes the wind out of you. So, like. You're out of com you're out of commission, believably enough for a one, two, three. Yeah. Yeah, and I remember like someone on Twitter. I can't remember the name, but he was like tweeting for the people who were complaining about, about you know Walter ending the match by a shop. I'd rather get, take a Batista bomb than a shop for Walter. I would too. Yeah, and I'm, uh, I'm like, whoa, yeah, this guy's right. <laughs> Great match, I think. Uh, match of the night, the uh, night one at least. Would you? Um. Then we had MSK, which is Grizzled Young Veterans versus Legado El Van Del Fantasma. Um, I was thinking Fantasma was going to win. I thought it was going to be a clean sweep for that faction. Um, honestly, MSK makes the most sense. They the most buzz coming in uh, especially the, for the past like two years um, yeah. and like impact um, them winning not just the Dusty Rhodes Cup but winning the tag titles here definitely cements them as top tier team um, tag division is going to be different uh, over the next couple of months because you have like these teams here um uh, you know their number one contenders are going to be uh, um, and I Dane and Drake. So yeah, I think these three teams has have established themselves as the three main teams for the tag division. Now. These three yes, teams are the core. Definitely. The yes. It's and I, I do think that they might eventually. Well, I guess not since uh, um, they now have her since they now have them um, with a. Uh, Una. I was going to say originally I was thinking that they might send over Andrews and Webster. But it seems like they're doing a uh, trio with uh, Stu and Danny, yeah, Lewin, Danny Luna and Luna now. So yeah. I don't think they're going to be sending them over quite yet. I mean, yeah, they could always like tape a bunch of them because I think that's what they do in the EEK. They just, you know, tape three or four, three or five of the episodes at a time or something like that. And then they just. Yeah. Because. I mean, like, uh, I, I think we should talk about the NXT preload when it comes to it, but uh, definitely Walter versus Brown was not, did not happen when it aired. It happened yes. a week ago. It, I think it happened before Walter even came to, the, came to Orlando, so it's probably Likely. like a month ago. Yeah. But, uh, so they could, you could see Webster and, uh, I mean... Unless they're gonna they're gonna feud with the new hunt, no. They could. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, it's maybe we don't want to see that now. It, it feels like you know their thing with Danny and Luna is gonna take precedence. This match was good. This match was absolute chaos. It's it's the same like uh, the Dusty Rhodes uh, Classic Finals, which was also like it had like a you know the era of chaos to it but having three teams in there i turned it up to 11 it's like it did there was great wrestling and there was great chaos as well it's like it's it's weird how the grizzled young veterans and msk balance that out in their in the dusty cup finals thing and 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 that was on display again with this was also the added element of phantasma yeah and yeah i think i think like you know in the absence of then uh, Danny Birch and Donald Larkin from the division. You need a fresh face, and you need someone that they can challenge once they get back. So, 
Yeah, exactly. Uh, MSK, I think, uh, having a babyface team because yeah is uh, as champions and having msk like fresh you know talented young guys who are likable also they've been presented as yes. likable i mean like i've heard about the rascals before but i've only seen them on nxt and they've been presented as you know guys that you can actually relate to or guys you can yeah and so it's high energy yeah high energy they're like while they're funny they're still they're still hard to their promos like when the uh, I can't remember their name, uh, their given names right now. So, like the one guy who was talking about his dad. And oh yeah. Watch wrestling. So, so, like it's a lot of stories that you know make you like these guys, and uh, you know, and you want that. You want that in a banner tag team, like, in a banner face for a division. Definitely. <laughs> and all right, in the main event of night one. We had Raquel Gonzalez defeating Io Shirai. This match is actually shorter than I thought it was. Um, yeah, I thought yeah. it was about 20 minutes watching it. 16 um, minutes. They did a lot in this match. And uh, Io Shirai, she, she's getting that, like a Shane McMahon type reputation where if she sees something she can jump off of, she does it. Yeah. Like, when you jumped off the house in your house or the um just the cage at yeah. war games jumping off the deadly game skull here and any yeah. under kill um i like that you said the you game skull, so we can just you know put that <laughs> <laughs> the uh, um, you had you know the quick run in from Dakota in the first like five minutes and sent her to the back. So it was basically just you know one on one yeah, match, keeping the match pure the rest of the night. And Kill almost had this happened twice now. She's had a baby face esque moment twice now in the past month once when her and dakota were going up against naya, um, naya and uh shayna mm -hmm. now the victory here i think she might be not quite yet i think they're going to be having her and dakota split soon because after this she has she could either start feuding with uh for like her first opponent she could go against um um, God, I'm spacing her name right now. Um, Mercedes Martinez. Oh, yeah. But then you could easily have her go against Dakota Kai. Because um, you know that feud's going to be happening. And, and then also, yeah, of course, you know, to, Kai yeah. Valkyrie. Yeah, and they seem to, like, you know... She has a big upside as a baby face. Then, uh, yes. Like, she's, like, in the all the interviews she's done for the bump or, you know the press conference or even with Samoa Joe on the pre-show she seems she's super that, smiley yeah yeah she's super smiley she's confident she's uh, she's smart she's well spoken she is yes. and she doesn't seem li like and she doesn't have anything that's necessarily heelish about her yes. she just she's she's to, now yeah. it's it's like um, Michaels and Diesel. Yeah. She's achieved the title before Michaels did. So, um, I mean, if if they if they ever did like a a uh, Bell Royal, have basically Dakota basically in the Michaels role. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. That, that could work. It's uh, again, yeah, it's the same thing like Diesel and uh, but Diesel. She was hiding in plain sight. Like they were just you know building her building her building her but she was like behind dakota or next to dakota so you're not so you didn't focus on it as much you were just yes like whoa okay this is getting better but the moment Eo challenged her you're like whoa okay this is a credible challenger actually this is yeah. this is good this might go somewhere and yeah, Io Shirai has that uh, again. Like uh, we don't want to, you know, uh, undersell also Shirai's ring work, way of being. Uh, like it's also I mean, like uh, Shirai has this ability to make any any opponent that she goes against seem like a legitimate threat. Yes. Or, yeah, and the whole story of it was like she was doing anything she could to put Raquel away, and she could not. And 
and that was and that's and that's a good story to tell like she's just kept you know like she's keeping hammering away jumping off skulls jumping off the top jumping uh, you know doing everything it's still Raquel keeps coming back like I'm a it's kind of like it's the same story that happened in the championship match the next night but different it's we'll get to yeah that. but it's yeah it's a great match it's a great coming out party for uh, Raquel Gonzalez I uh, love that after she was out in the uh, in the arena they sprayed her with the sanitizer as she was coming back and <sighs> They did the whole thing. I had a feeling right there when that happened. I thought she was going to turn around and eat um, a kick from Dakota. That's how I thought they were going to end. They could. Night they, one was yeah. with Dakota kicking her. Yeah. They could, but I think with Dakota, it's the slow burn would be better for this uh, kick. I, done, I too would just though the way it looked with yeah, all that, it, uh, uh, that, that smoke kinda, coming. Yeah, the dry ice lingered for a while, so you're like, okay, maybe something's happening here. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, but yeah. yeah. Uh, did you see that video of her? You know, uh, meeting her, like, her parents backstage after she won. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's uh, that's why I think like you know, having her as a baby face with it could turn out to be a good thing. It's like I do. Yeah, it's like she's relatable, or. Like Plus, it's it's very smart with the way at the press conference when she er, spoke Spanish. Mm-hmm. It's very the perfect time for this because you have her built as your top star, and she's bilingual. Yeah, you easily tap into like the Spanish market right there, the Spanish, and yeah. you have an icon for little girls looking up and being like, oh, "I can be like this someday." So it's the perfect time for her to switch the babyface role. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, great night. The great night one. Uh, it's a great. Uh, it's a great first live event on Peacock. It's. It's and it's fitting that the first live event on the network was Arrival, which is basically a takeover. Yeah, and the first on Peacock is a takeover. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, and Triple H actually said this on the bomb that they were both kind of sort of like in the beta testing uh, shows for those platforms. Yes. And but it's still, it's a great thing. It's because if someone is watching this and expecting like you know your run of the mill regular modern day WWE you get you know you get side uh, you get sidewiped by this amazing under sort of like a, well, underground fight looking <laughs> exactly problem. it's which might work if someone is actually watching this it doesn't it does not work it doesn't necessarily the look does not necessarily work when you're channel surfing I, I think I think uh, I think that's what happens in the reading where if someone's a casual and just strolling and they see just a shot of NXT and they see a shot of AEW there well there's more color here I'll go here yeah and uh, I'll see this and then you see and then and then you know AEW is what AEW is if you if you get turned off on it yeah it's, that's another story for another podcast but if it turns you off you're not gonna go back and check out the you know the darker the darker looking less you know engaging show from the outside exactly even though it's that's my problem that was my whole problem with NXT during the whole you know between Kitation Mark Wednesday yeah. Night War so oh, I, I actually I for people listening I got my COVID vaccine earlier and I'm having a really bad side effect right now. I I actually am understanding the booking methods of AEW. Oh, oh! So, so that's what happens. happens. That's how they do. It. <laughs> yeah, I get. Oh, so that's what happens. Yeah. So you're telling me they they all got COVID at the beginning, and that's how how they book the shows from there. Oh, that, that's side effect. <laughs> that's but that's not possible. They don't run the sloppy shop over there. <laughs> It's Florida. Yeah, everything's not in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all for night. All for night one. Thank you for joining us on the Alpha Macho Drive-In. If you liked that video, please click like and subscribe to our channel for more content from the drive-in. For full episodes of our podcast, you may look us up on Anchor, Spotify, 
or wherever your favorite podcasts are available. Just search for Outlaw Much Show Driving. And if it's not too much trouble, would you help us out here? Spread the word. Share. We would really appreciate it. Thank you. We love you. Bye.